morning. And welcome to worship. It's good to be together this morning, worshiping the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to the moms among us. I hope you have a happy day. Um, a brief announcement as we begin today. Um, I received word this morning that our friend Mildred Cromie passed away this week. Um, Mildred Cromie. Yeah, so she had moved to be closer to her daughter. So um, I have a message from the daughter that she'd like to do a brief memorial service here. So I will um, touch base with her and get back to you when that service will be for Mildred. So our hearts go out to her family and friends and we'll pray, uh, we'll pray for, for her family today. Um, all right, a quick story as we begin this morning. We remember uh, Carol Burnett, right, the comedian? And you know that she's always famous for this, right? She started pulling her ear to say hello to her mom when she was working, and then when she had children, she would always work that in. So she might be at work, but she's thinking of and loving her kids or her mom. She wanted the people she loved to know that she was thinking of them throughout her day. It became something she was known for. So I was thinking about what kind of reminders we could put throughout our day to remind us of the love of God, to remind us that God is with us. So we're going to think about that today, about how we follow the invisible God and remember that God is with, with us. So let's come together and worship. Our call to, call to worship today is from 1 Peter Chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. I'll read the regular print. You join me on the bold print. In your hearts, revere, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Our first hymn this morning is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
as we come to our time of confession, let us call to mind the grace and love of God, which is new to us every day. God loves us, wants to be connected to us, and forgive us. So let's come confessing our sins, assured of our forgiveness. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now silent prayer. People of God, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. on some responsive hymn uh, psalms lately and Charlie picked this one for us. I think you will enjoy it. Uh, so we're going to learn the response and then I'm going to sing the verses. So we'll learn the response and then we'll go to the verses. So he's gonna, we're, I'm going to sing it through once and then you'll join me.
because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. After a little while, the world no longer is going to see me. But you are going to see me because I live you will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what has happened to you? You are going to reveal yourself to us, but not the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will follow my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks to you. So last week we heard the beginning of the passage from John that we read the second part of today. And last week we talked about when Jesus was going away, go through the cross and the resurrection, um, he was telling his disciples this day before it happened, you can't get lost. Don't worry. I won't let you get lost. So let's keep that in mind, that that's the background. Then this week, 
He's giving them instructions and us instructions about how do we follow God when God is invisible. Now, my kids used to watch this cartoon on the Disney Channel. It was called Phineas and Ferb. And it was these two little kids who would invent these things, uh, like huge things in their backyard. And their big sister was always trying to get them in trouble for doing all these things. Um, but it seemed to be every time the mom came home, you know, the thing would get zapped invisible and no one would know that it actually happened except the big sister. There was one time where she ran to get some paint and, and splash it on the invisible thing, but of course it was gone by that moment. Um, and it got me thinking, you know, I think about that cartoon, the problem of invisibility. You don't have to be a cartoon character to realize that when something is invisible, it complicates things, doesn't it? Um, we sing that one hymn sometimes, right? Immortal, invisible, God only wise. We're dealing with a God who is invisible. I don't know about you, but I've often thought, if I could just be back in the time of the disciples and do what the disciples did and just follow him because Jesus is right there, it would be so much easier than this faith thing where we follow an invisible God. So that's what Jesus is talking about to them and to us today, about when Jesus goes away and is crucified and dead and resurrected, what happens then? How do we follow? And Jesus is saying in this passage that there are gifts in this season of discipleship that in some ways, it's better that Christ has gone away because he can indwell us by the Holy Spirit. And it's difficult for us to think about invisible. But we need to remember that invisible does not mean imaginary. We may have grown out of, grown out of our in, imaginary friends, but this is an invisible friend. But we can respond to him because we know invisible can be real, right? Some of the strongest forces on earth are invisible. Wind, gravity, magnetism. We know they're there. Can we see them? No. But we operate our lives thinking that these things are real and knowing that they influence us. So how do we relate? To an invisible God. The first thing our passage tells us is that we are to love Jesus, which means paying careful attention to his commands. So he tells us pay attention to Jesus's commands and it helps us to know what God wants or the work of God. So many times people get this wrong, right? They do all sorts of things to try to get God's attention, right? They, they fast for long periods of time. They do flashy works. Well, think about what Jesus told us to do. What are Jesus's commands? Anybody want to throw one out there? What's a command of Jesus? Yell it to me. Honor your father and your mother. Yep, he did tell us to do that. Love one another. Didn't he tell us that like a hundred times, right? Love one another. Love one another. So when you think about what are Jesus' commands? Love one another. <laughs> love your neighbor. Love your, your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemy. <laughs> we teach this to five-year-olds. But 95-year-olds still have a problem with it, right? <laughs> loving your neighbor. Loving your enemy. He taught us forgive. He taught us pray. Pray when you need help. Pray for the other people around you. We think of those commands and we think they're not that. We know them, but putting them into practice is the challenge, right? Remembering the loving, the hoping, the praying. But Jesus is saying, if you love him, listen to the commands. Which are these? We can remember them. Love, forgive, 
pray, help. Why? Why does he say to do this? Um, it's kind of that idea that we need to get to know what Jesus is like. Right? Because otherwise, we tend to think God is just like us. We tend to think what we think is the most important thing. But the more we think about those commands of loving and forgiving and praying and helping and hoping, the more we recognize when God is at work in ourselves and in other people. So that's the first way we are to relate to an invisible God is to get to know and internalize those commands that Jesus gave us because they help us to understand how God works. And I think they tell us something interesting about what love is, right? Because we often think love is like how I feel <laughs> toward you or, um, you know, that it's affection. Right, but this is, um, love isn't singing about love. Love isn't doing what we want and then calling it love. Love is actually listening to what another person wants. Hmm. That has a lot of application, doesn't it? It has a lot of application in our relationship with God and it has a lot of application in our relationship to one another. Because so often we want to do what we want to do and call it love. But this is saying what love is, is I listen to what you want and I try to do it. <laughs> so this is defining love for us, love for God, walking with that invisible God. Is again, not just doing whatever we want, but trying to listen for what God wants and doing it. That's what love looks like. And it says that um, the, uh, God will, then Jesus will give us the helper, the spirit of truth. That in some way God is able to dwell in us now after this, um, after Jesus dies and rises and sends the spirit. He says, I want to send the helper to be with you always. And he says, the world can't accept this spirit. And I was thinking about that. It says, you know, like the world can't accept the invisible God. Now, God obviously loves the world. God is everywhere. But he's talking about this special sense that God is with you through the Holy Spirit. That it doesn't just happen to everyone on the planet, but if we want God to be our guide and our friend and the one who leads us, it means we make a distinction between the world and God. Okay, so think about this with me. When yourself is in the center of all your decision making, well, that's not what God would want. That's what a worldly mindset would want. Um, in Luke 12, it tells us the world runs after what they should eat and drink and wear. And it also tells us anxiety drives their decisions. So when Jesus is contrasting the world with the spirit, he's saying, basically, you are not open to the spirit when you're running after things, what you would eat and drink and wear, or when anxiety is running the show. We know what that feels like, don't we? <laughs> when you're only worried about what's going to happen next, this is saying it's hard for God to tap on your shoulder when you are in this circle of anxiety. Does he condemn us? No. No. But he's saying if you want to be led by the invisible God, we try to lay down some of that anxiety. Or at least acknowledge it. God, I'm having a hard time with the anxiety. And I don't want it to lead my life. It's a process, right? But he's saying you can't be led by the Spirit when you're led by something else. 
anxiety, the pursuit of things. And he says, going forward, the Father and I will make our home with you. Now, I was thinking about that promise. What a promise that what Jesus really wants, one of the purposes of this death, resurrection, and sending the Spirit is so that God the Father can make his home with us. Yes, in the future, in heaven, but also right now. What does he want for us? <laughs> he wants us to be at peace. He wants us to feel full of God's spirit. He wants us to live because Christ is alive. Those who love me will keep my word. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with them. Now, when you think about a home, it's not a part-time or a temporary situation. Jesus didn't say, we're going to come and take a vacation with you. Or if you'll obey my teaching once in a while, we'll go out to lunch. He says, no, what my desire is, is that we come and make a home with you. That God is with you from this moment on. And this has been something that God has wanted from the beginning. If we think about that first story in the Bible, right? Adam and Eve. God wanted to walk with them in the cool of the day. He wanted to be with them people wherever they were. And that is still his goal, that we don't walk through this life feeling alone, orphaned, abandoned, but with the very presence of God with us. It is God's intention that throughout this day and all of our days, we experience the peace and hope and presence of God. And not just while we're at church, although that's a good place to have the presence of God, but throughout the things we do, our chores, our regular everyday life. Do you remember in 1 Corinthians it says, pray continually? And I often wondered what that meant, because how does a person pray continually? We've got lots of stuff we've got to do. But I think what this is talking about reflects what Jesus is talking about. Not that we're always in church or always down on our knees, but we always have that conduit open between God and I. So even when we're doing other things, to know that God is with us, that God loves us, and that God is guiding us throughout our day. Colossians 3 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not men. So what this tells us is that as we walk with the invisible God, we're to look at our tasks during that day, whether they feel like holy tasks or mundane tasks, and say we do it wholeheartedly because this is what God has put before us. Jesus wants to build a home in our lives in all the different things we do. But walking with the Lord doesn't happen by accident. We accept it, we cultivate it. We make this place in our heart that is connected to God. And you know, we talked about, we started out with Carol Burnett, right, with the ear pulling. <laughs> and it's kind of that setting reminders through your day that you are loved, that the Lord is with you, so how could it go? Could you write yourself some notes? And remember, God is here. He wants to give you peace. I have to laugh because there's this one story that comes out of the Methodist church. I know some of you are grew up in the Methodist tradition. Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of John and Charles Wesley, the famous people, uh, she had, I think she had like nine children, right? So, but she loved the Lord and wanted to practice this idea of following the invisible God so do you know what Susanna Wesley would do Th throughout her day? She had she was she was old-fashioned woman. She wore an apron, <laughs> and she would take her apron and she would throw it over her head, <laughs> and she'd be like, "I'm spending a few seconds with the Lord, kids. Just don't bother me." <laughs> While she could like take a couple deep breaths, 
I remember that the Lord was with her and that even though her household was crazy with all those nine kids running all over before the days of washing machines and dishwashers and she wanted to remember that God was here and the work that she had to do was God's work for her and he was there. So we don't wear aprons. <laughs> But I think we need to follow Susanna's idea, right? That throughout the day, we make spaces to remember and to invite in the presence of God. Because God does not want us to feel orphaned or alone. He wants us to know that his presence is with us. Carve it out. Think outside the box. Learn to quiet your heart. Like we said, two things can't be in charge, right? Anxiety and the Lord's spirit. So we need to practice that, that putting down our worries, putting them in God's hands, and choosing to ask for the peace of God. Is your faith tired? Are you weary? Then this word is for you, that God loves you and wants to make his home in your life, that even though he is invisible, he is mighty, and he is with you this day to love you. You are not walking alone. Jesus has not left us as orphans, but he comes to us in the Holy Spirit. Let us open our hearts and our lives. Let us listen to his commands so we understand what he is like. Praise be to God. Amen. So we're going to sing the hymn, Because He Lives. <clears throat> Yeah.
as we come to our time of prayer, um, I got a prayer request for Kevin. We'll also want to continue to pray for Sandy Foot. Uh, what other prayer needs or praises would you like to share with the congregation today? Suzanne? Carol Yeah, we'll pray for Carol. Janet? Oh, yeah, for Boots. For Nancy. For Amy, yes. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of all time and space, you initiated your relationship of love and generosity with all of creation. Through the word and the spirit, you continue in love for us. Fill us this day with a deep and abiding awareness of your presence, your call, and your grace in our lives. Shape us into the people you've made us to be. Poured out in mercy for the sake of Christ. Almighty God, beyond our understanding, we cry out to you as your beloved children and bring before you all the things that we are experiencing, sorrow and pain and hope and joy. We pray today for all mothers that you would bless and help them in their challenges. We pray for those who have a complicated relationship with their mothers for peace. We think of our mothers who have passed away and we pray for comfort and joy in their memory. Lord, we ask for your peace in our world we ask for your help for the suffering. We pray for those ones who have been mentioned. We pray for comfort for Carol Cromie and for all those who are mourning Mildred's passing today. We pray for your healing for Kevin and for Sandy, for Boots, for Nancy, for Amy, and for all of those ones we are carrying around, worried about, anxious about, we ask for your help, oh God. We ask for you to be at work in those situations and lives of those we care about so much. We ask you to help us put our burdens down so that anxiety does not control us, but there's space for your spirit. Lead us to life, O oh Lord. We pray these things together, and we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace.